This video is sponsored by Skillshare. More about them later on. Hi there everyone, and welcome to another video in my series on prop testing. And today we're going to be looking at 7 inch props. And I think we can all agree that 7 inches is really the perfect size. It's a little above average, but it gives you a bit extra to go harder for longer without being as intimidating and scary as 8 or 9 inch rigs, which, let's face it, can be a little difficult to handle, particularly for those less experienced. In this video, I'm going to be taking you through my test setup and the equipment that I use to collect all this data, and then we're going to be looking at the results and answering the question, which 7-inch prop is right for you, whether you're building a long-range cruiser or a small sin lifter. Let's not waste any more time. Let's dive right into it. So let me take you through the test equipment that I use to collect this data. From an electrical perspective, we have a 5200 milliamp hour 6S battery that's connected to a benchtop power supply that keeps it topped up to a constant 24 volts. That battery is feeding power to the main board of this Taito Robotics 1585 thrust test stand. And that test stand is measuring the voltage and the current that's being supplied to the ESC on top here that's driving the motor and the prop. From a mechanical perspective, we have the motor here that's generating torque. And that torque is measured by two load cells, one here and one here. And by looking at the difference in the reading from those two load cells, we can work out what torque the motor is generating. The prop is also generating thrust. And that thrust is measured by a load cell down here. And you can see if I deflect the test stand back slightly, you can see how the test stand bends ever so gently. And that allows the load cell there to measure the thrust. The final thing that we need to measure is the RPM of the prop. And that's done using an optical sensor and this white tape here. Every time the white tape passes the optical sensor, that records one revolution of the motor, and that can be used to calculate the RPM of the prop. All right, so now I've shown you the test setup. Let's take a look at some of the test results and see which props stand out among the rest. Let's start by talking about weight. And weight is really important when considering the right prop for different builds, because the lighter a prop is, the less torque it's going to require to accelerate and decelerate its mass. And if you need less torque, that might allow you to choose a smaller motor volume for a particular prop. So rather than using a 2808 size motor, maybe you're using a smaller 2408 size motor. And that saves you weight in the motor as well. And if you have a lighter motor, you can even get away with maybe a thinner arm. And that might allow you to save even more weight without getting into issues with vibration. So for ultralight 7-inch builds, the Gemfan 7035 Biblade prop would probably be my choice. It's by far the lightest prop that I tested. And at 4.6 grams, it's actually pretty comparable to some 5-inch props. Efficiency is the next parameter that I tested. And this is efficiency in grams per watt, so grams of thrust per watt of power at 1.4 kilos of thrust. So all the props are compared at the same thrust level. And efficiency is really key for achieving long flight times. And I found that relatively light pitched biblade props performed the best in terms of efficiency. So again, at the top, you see this Gemfan 7035 biblade, which is really, really efficient at 1.4 kilos of thrust and across the whole thrust range. So that's going to be a great choice for an ultralight 7 inch where you're looking for the longest possible flight times. I found that steeper pitch props did not perform as well. So if you're starting to move up to a 7x4.5 or a 7x5, then you're starting to lose out on efficiency. And I wouldn't recommend that for a long range build where you're looking to achieve the longest possible flight times. Max thrust is a parameter that's really, really important for sin lifters that are carrying heavier payloads where you need to be able to move the extra weight of a camera. And here, I found that props that had a really wide cord, so the width of the prop blade from the leading edge to the trailing edge, the props with a wider cord provided a lot more thrust, regardless of their pitch, really. The largest thrust that I measured was this Gemfan 7537 carbon nylon prop 
Obviously, the extra diameter also giving it a benefit here in terms of thrust. But I can't find anywhere to buy this, which means that my recommendation for maximum thrust is this HQ DP 7x4x3 uh, prop that provided around 2,200 grams of thrust at full throttle on my 3106 motor. The 7x3.5x3 V1S prop also performed really well at very nearly 2.2 kilos of thrust as well. So either of these two would probably be my pick. And if Gemfan make this 7537 more available, then that could be a good choice as well. Advanced ratio is somewhat more of a tricky parameter to explain. And I've actually produced another video where I talk through how I calculate my proxy for advanced ratio. And I'll put a link to that down in the video description. But needless to say, in general, steeper pitch props achieve more thrust at a lower RPM. And what that means is that they are able to provide thrust up to a higher flight speed. So if you're looking to fly really, really fast, or you're looking for a prop that will generate a lot of thrust, even at a high flight speed, then you should be looking at a slightly steeper pitch prop. And we can see here that the 7x4x3 from HQ does really well, as does the 7x4.5x3, um, again from HQ, their carbon nylon prop. Shallower pitch props like this 7035 do less well. And so that wouldn't be preferred if top speed and particularly thrust at high speed is really important to you. I would say the winner in this category is the HQ 7x4x3, which does a really good job of achieving an advanced ratio that's about 14% higher than the average of all the props that I tested. Vibration is a really important parameter for people who are looking to capture very stable, very smooth footage. And so it's, it's important for Cinelifter pilots and also pilots of long range quads who are looking to capture super smooth mountain surfing footage without having to do a lot of stabilization in post. Primarily, it's to do with how balanced the prop is from manufacturing. And so I tend to find that certain models of prop will have very good vibration. And the V1S series from HQ has proven to be a very good prop in terms of vibration, both at the seven inch size, but also at the five inch size as well. So there's something about this series of prop in how it's manufactured that leads to it being very, very well balanced out of the factory. So if you're looking for very smooth footage, the 7x3.5x3 V1S is a really good choice. The final thing to look at before I give you my conclusions is the total score from all the tests. And this is made by simply averaging all of the other scores that we've talked about already. We can see that we have a couple of props that stand out at the top of the list. The 7035 Biblade prop from Gemfan and the 7x3.5x3 V1S prop from HQ both do extremely well in terms of total score. But what's interesting is that these two props are very different props. The 7035 is a very lightweight prop that's very efficient, but doesn't produce much thrust. Whereas the 7x3.5x3 is an averagely heavy prop that is quite efficient, produces a lot of thrust, but is exceptionally smooth and well balanced. If you want to dive into this data in more detail, there's a link in the video description to a Google Drive with my results spreadsheet, as well as all the data logs from the props that I tested. So that brings us to the conclusions and a couple of props that I can recommend to you. The first is this 7035 prop from Gemfan. This is gonna be the ideal prop if you're looking to build an ultralight long range seven inch quad. It's a very light prop which will allow you to use a lighter weight motor and save more weight across the build that way. And it's a very efficient prop, so it's gonna give you nice long flight times. If you're looking for a prop for a slightly heavier rig and you're really concerned about stability of footage for something like a Cinelifter, then I can also recommend this 7x3.5x3 prop from HQ because it's exceptionally well balanced. It produces really the least vibration of all the props that I tested and it also has a good mix of efficiency and maximum thrust without being too heavy. So it's a, it's a really nice all around prop from that perspective. If you enjoy the work that I'm doing and would like to support the channel, 
then I'd really appreciate it if you consider checking out my Patreon. You can join from just a few dollars a month and it'll give you some sneak peeks of some of the things that I'm working on, as well as access to a special area of my Discord server where you can discuss some of the frames that I've designed, including this. This is the AOS 7. And if you're looking for a really low vibration platform for chasing fast targets or long range cruising, then this might be the frame for you. I'll put a link down in the video description where you can uh, learn a little bit more about this one. But now let's talk a little bit about the sponsor of this video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for anyone who loves learning, wants to explore their creativity and learn new skills. Do you have a specific skill that you're trying to learn? Well, Skillshare might be the perfect place for you to start. I'm particularly interested to follow this class on DaVinci Resolve by Oliver Astrologo, and I'm hoping it's going to allow me to make more interesting, engaging and dynamic videos for you guys in the future. It covers everything from post-production, tracking and stabilization, making creative transitions, as well as masking to allow beautiful, smooth transitions between different clips. The first thousand people to follow the link in the video description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare so that you can try out some of these classes for yourself. That's all that I have for you for today. So until next time, I wish you all very, very happy flying.